A boy named Harley and his friends attend a taping of the Banana Splits TV show, which is supposed to be a fun-filled birthday for young Harley, but things take an unexpected turn and the body count quickly rises. That's why today on The Summarizer, the banana splits. This is the story of Harley, a boy who, even though is quite grown up, spends his time watching a TV show for kids called The Banana Splits. Our protagonist lives with his mother named Beth, who apparently doesn't think it's weird that her son watches a baby's TV show and spends his time wearing stupid costumes with his brother named Austin, who doesn't do much during the whole movie, and with his stepfather named Mitch, who, even though he's an idiot, is the only one who realizes that Harley is too old to be watching that TV show. Before continuing with the video, a couple of days ago, we reached 10,000 subscribers on The Summarizer, and to celebrate, we created another movie recap channel called Planet Recap, where we'll upload recaps of science fiction movies with super interesting plots. So if you like these kind of videos, please go subscribe to that channel. The link is in the pinned comment. Now let's continue with the kill count. The next day is Harley's birthday. His brother gives him this gift that is something from the show, and even though his stepfather thinks the show is stupid, his mother has already bought tickets to go to a live taping of the Banana Splits. And since there are five tickets, he asks if his best friend Duncan can go, but since he has the flu, they invited this girl who, even though she doesn't like the show and says it's for babies, her mother forces her to go. At the entrance of the studios, they give them a map, and the guy at the door tells them at night he sees the banana splits riding around in cars, laughing and stuff like that, but they don't give him much importance, and the family arrives at the banana split stage, and there they're greeted by this woman named Paige, who asks everyone for their phones. Oh, and Harley almost commits suicide when he wants to say hi to the banana splits. Kids, just remember, suicide is never the answer. All right. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the studio, there's a guy building another robot. He starts talking to figures and sends them backstage. But first he starts to update one of the animatronics. And while all this is going on, we meet Rebecca who's looking for one of the robots missing. And when she runs into Andy, he tells her that he's gonna cancel the show because it's boring and old and today is gonna be the last show. Anyway, after all this, the show starts. Welcome to the banana split. It's gonna be a shit show. Before the show starts, they're told that if they have stars behind their tickets, they just won and get to stay after the show and meet the banana splits. And conveniently for the plot, the people who win are this fat guy who's the father of this girl, two retarded TikTokers, but not our main character. There they introduce the banana splits, and I take advantage of this moment to introduce them. Bingo! Marky! Fuego! Stevie! That man dressed like a child? The only problem is that Drooper is missing and nobody knows where he is. At one point, Austin goes to the toilet, and while we see that Drooper is ready, but when he's being prepared, some weird lights appear in his eyes. Meanwhile, in the show, there are some kids participating in a weird game where the robots throw things at them, and Mitch goes to see what's taking Austin so long. Meanwhile, Stevie is drunk in the dressing room. Paige tells him he has to go back to the show, but there, Austin shows up and asks if he can get his brother to go after the meeting with the banana splits, and even offers her $20, but the girl ends up accepting for free. At one point, they pass Snorky, but even though it's not normal for them to walk alone, they don't make a big deal about it. There, Stevie is about to return to the stage, but he overhears the boss saying they're gonna cancel the show and sell the robots, so he leaves. But in a moment, the door of his boss closes and Andy can't get out of the office. <laughs> Anyway, we still don't count it because he shows up again later. Anyway, don't worry, spoiler, he's gonna die later on. Before the end of the show, they have to turn a wheel that defines how the show is gonna end, and it ends in Rock Out, which is like a music show or something. It basically sucks, but I guess the kids that age like it. After that, Austin and Mitch come back in, and everyone keeps watching the end of the show. Until at one point, one of the robots throws Stevie to hell, and that seems weird to our character. And if he thinks it's weird, I believe him because no one knows more about this shit show. Anyway, the show ends and everyone with stars behind the tickets gets to stay, and also Harley stays with his whole family because Paige clearly wants something with Austin. After the show, Stevie starts bitching at the robots and telling them their show sucked, and that's when his eyes light up, and that means they're like mean or something. Drooper enters Stevie's place, and he has the lousy idea to spit on him, so the robot gives him his comeuppance. 
While they go to the event after the show, Mitch goes out to talk on the phone for work, and after a while, Beth goes to look for him. But anyway, this doesn't matter much. The important thing is that in a moment, the banana splits appear. There, the TikTokers are super happy and do what any TikToker would do, make a TikTok, but this other guy is only there so that some producer can see his daughter. And as Paige tells him that she can't introduce him to anyone, he himself goes off with his daughter to find a producer. And there, the TikTokers take the opportunity to get away and be able to stream from other parts of the studios. And by this time, the organization of the place is a disaster, and the kids are left alone with the killer dolls until they realize that Snorky is missing. And on top of that, everything keeps getting worse because when Beth goes to look for her husband, she grabs his phone and finds out that he's sleeping with his assistant. Just then, Austin shows up and they start fighting, but nobody cares about that. The important thing is that the two of them go back to look for the kids, and Mitch just leaves. Oh, and remember that the organization was a disaster. Well, now the two kids are walking everywhere inside the studio, and Harley is sad because he didn't meet Snorky. Rebecca is gathering all her things because she was fired, when this guy appears with his daughter, who forces the girl to dance in front of her. What you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside your tongue. Stop! Rebecca doesn't care though because the show is cancelled. At one point, the TikTokers enter a stage and start streaming on that set, and in the middle of the streaming, he proposes to her. She says yes, and everyone is super happy until Flegel shows up. After breaking his phone, he puts him in one of those magic boxes and cuts him in half with a pretty questionable technique. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess it could be really sharp. Well, dear, you'll just have to use your imagination. After that, he's about to kill the TikToker girl, but he hears that Harley's looking for them and goes with them. There, they ask him where Snorky is, and the animatronic takes him to the other robot. Meanwhile, Mitch keeps receiving messages from his assistant, and I don't know why he didn't leave. I don't know what he's waiting for. The thing is that at one point, the elephant appears, the idiot drops his cell phone, and I don't know why instead of running in a straight line, he doesn't get up there where the car can't reach him. Meanwhile, the girl's father is still looking for an audition, so they go into Andy's office, but only one of the robots is inside, and watch this scene because it's excellent. And he is not dead, so we don't count that kill yet. And the important thing is that another one of the robots kidnaps the girl. To all this, Austin and his mother returns to look for Harley, but everything is already a disaster and there's nobody in the studio. And meanwhile, Mitch keeps running away from the elephant until he runs into the security guy, or, well, what's left of the security guy. <laughs> Mitch reappears later, and that's why we don't count him either. Meanwhile, there continues to be unbearable chatter between mother and son, until at one point they run into the rest of the secondary characters. They try to call 911, but none of the phones work, and as the guy says he was attacked by the banana splits, Beth and her son go to look for the children. Meanwhile, one of the dolls takes the two kids and kidnaps them along with the other girl. At one point, they get into a place on the stage, and Austin is kidnapped by one of the dolls, but his mother goes up to help him and throws the doll. After that, they cross paths with the two TikTokers, or, well, with one and a half TikToker, and when they ask her about her son, she says that Flegel took them. Then the guy who updated the dolls appears and says that now they don't pay attention to him because something in the network is wrong. At one point, one of the robots appears and brings Bingo dying, and the kids take the opportunity to grab the keys and escape. After that, another robot attacks these two characters and forces them to play one of these games, and I don't quite understand why they don't run away instead of continuing to play the game, but let's assume it's because they're stupid. The point is that they keep playing, but they can't find the blue key, and if you were wondering where it was, well, it was there. Giant hammer. The only one who seems smart are the three kids, because they're the only ones who try to escape. But at one point, they come across Snorky the Elephant, and the boy goes to talk to him because he says he's different. So he dances in front of him and asks him to please help them, and the three of them leave with Snorky. Meanwhile, I don't even know what Paige is doing anymore, but she walks around the place until she meets one of the dolls. And when she seems to be smart and starts to run, she has the brilliant idea to hide in that place. Obviously, she finds Rebecca's corpse, but that's when all the others show up to get her out of there. And since the phones don't work and the cell phones are smashed, they come to the conclusion that the only way to stop the dolls is Carl. Who? 
Oh yeah, because I didn't introduce him to you, but Carl is the old man who created the robots. Anyway, he tells them that they can't stop them because they're already programmed that way. At one point, they start listening to a song, and that leads them to a kind of hideout. And before they go down, the TikToker discovers that Carl was designing a fifth banana split, so she grabs the disguise and kills Carl. At one point, our protagonists go into some sort of tunnels, and there they find a bunch of dead bodies, and there's Doug, who was Paige's other intern friend, and all the adults who were at the show. And let's not spend time wondering how four super slow robots killed so many people before they can escape, because I'd rather spend that time counting what looks like 23 people, since it's supposedly all the parents who were at the show, plus some security guy we can't see. After that, they get to the show where the robots are presenting Stevie dead and say the show is going to last forever. There, Paige says that they are never going to release them and therefore the kids are going to die there. Anyway, to give some points to the robots now, the show is much more interesting because they set Stevie on fire and have the vice president tied to a wheel of fortune. While this show is going on, which is definitely a lot more fun, his mother sees Snorky chaining up the three kids. But since Snorky is good, he also gives the keys to Harley so he can free everyone. Meanwhile, the Wheel of Fortune hits Banana Split, and if you were wondering the same thing as them, What's a banana split? well, it's that. With Snorky's keys, all the kids manage to free themselves and start running, but Beth says to fight the robots to have the final battle, which, spoiler, is quite boring. Come on, you fussy son of a bitch. And they all manage to escape, and Harley's reunited with Zoe, but right there, Bingo shows up to fight Snorky in the real final fight, which is just as bad as the previous one, but I'm gonna try to make it look a bit more entertaining. <laughs> Bullshit. This show is really not what I expected. <laughs> That's incredible! At the end, the two robots die, and Harley is left super sad because his favorite doll died. And even though a lot of people just died, and a lot of kids now have no parents, there's still time for these two characters to kiss. Oh, and remember I told you that Mitch didn't die? Well, after this, he tells her that he loves her, but she tells him to fuck off and asks for a divorce. Oh, and he also has another little problem. And the one that ran him over was the TikToker, who does what any TikToker would do in her place, stealing the robots to make them a TikTok account and make a lot of money. Because apparently one of the robots is still alive, hopefully as an excuse for a possible sequel. And so ends the Banana Splits with a total of 34 kills. Please don't forget to subscribe to Planet Recap and The Summarizer, and to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next videos. Also comment what movies or series you'd like me to summarize, and share this video with your friends. See you later! Go to work. Okay. Bye!